On the 24th of May 2022, the social media space was thrown into confusion as operators of the anti graft agency, EFCC, stormed Abuja, residence of the ex-governor of Imo State, Senator Rocha Sokoracha, to arrest him. However, the ex-governor refused to cooperate with the agency who had the place surrounded, alleging that he was being witch-hunted as there was no warrant of arrest. <laughs> Um, ESCC is here with some, um, with some gunmen that have broken all my bulletproof doors and the last are hitting now. They just want to, I don't know what they want to do. This is my last appearance. I don't know what they probably can hear the noise behind. They are going to come and shoot. And so... After six hours of laying siege at his home, the anti-graft agency EFCT later weeks the senator away after forcibly breaking into his living room through the ceiling. They could not open from here. They had to go in through the ceiling here, this way. Yes. Then they broke it okay. Okay. to come into the room mm -hmm. from here. News had it that hours before the EFCC gained access to his living room, the ex-governor went live on Facebook, praying to God for protection. Beauty, please come, come for my rescue. Come and help me, my Lord, my Lord. Come and help me, my Lord, my God. However, on the Facebook post, the agency claimed the Imo State elder statement is not being witch haunted, rather. He is arrested as a result of the ongoing 2.9 billion naira fraud case connected to the senator and his refusal to honor the agency's invitation. With me in the studio is Barrister Ifan Awolo of JK Awolo and Associates, a one-time House of Assembly candidate under the APC platform, a former Delta North senatorial chairman and also the National Chairman of Human Rights Restoration Movement. Barrister, you are welcome to this program, sir. Thank you for having me. Um, some time ago, the EFCC, anti graft Agency, they stormed into the home of uh, Senator Rocha Sokoracha, the former ex-governor of Imo State, and a lot of issues occurred during that period. It was alleged that uh, he was being witch-hunted as a result of them breaking into his house. Uh, as a barrister, sir, uh, would you say that what they did that day by arresting Senator Rocha Sokoracha, was it lawful? Now, even if they had a warrant arrest, by breaking into the home of the senator, was it lawful, sir? Well, um, uh, thank you for having me once again. You're welcome, sir. We have in Nigeria, who are not a banana republic, who are governed by locks. First, the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria, upon which every law in Nigeria drew its strength. The law governing the police, that the police act, EFCC act, custom and ETC. They are being regulated by these laws. Let's take EFCC, which is a case study for today. First, do they have the right to arrest? The answer is in the affirmative. They have the right to arrest. The person they have gone to arrest, Ruchas, His Excellency Ruchas Okoroja, the senator representing uh, Imo State, one of the constituencies. Is he above the law? The answer is also no. no. He's not above the law. So, if in his house, the operative of the EFCC storms his house and said, we have come to see you in my own opinion, as a senator and as a responsible Nigerian, 
you open your door for them to sit down. Where are you from? Say, so we are from the EFCC. You have a right as a Nigerian to first of all interrogate them. One on one. Interrogate them. Where are you coming from? Where is your warrant of arrest? Who signed the warrant of arrest? Let me digress a bit. We all are aware when some security operative stormed the house of uh, um, justice, the uh, honorable justice, who delay. And I didn't discover that those people, don't, those, those people were not armed with any warrant of arrest. If she had behaved like Rochas, perhaps they would have done the same thing. But she opened the door. She you. opened the door. Where are you from? It's my CJM and where you are coming here. She quickly called the CJM. The CJM called the Attorney General. Attorney General called the EFCC. Called the police. It's come out there. They were on their own. Even when they were sent, when they saw the pressure coming down, the people who sent them disowned them. First of all, you must play your role as a responsible citizen of Nigeria. When you see a law enforcement agent in your house, you open your door. Where are you from? You question them. If they say they have warrant of arrest, what do you do first? You say, go back. You push them out of your house. You search them thoroughly. That is what the law provides. You search them thoroughly before you allow them in into your house. So that they, they, can, so that they will not bring in any okay. extraneous objects into your house. So going by this circumstance, did Rochas or Korocha, Senator Rochas, did he behave so? The answer no. is also no. no. These people came to your house. Politely. They were in your house for eight good hours. Eight good hours. You failed and deliberately refused to open your door. And when you failed to open your door, the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria and EFCC Act permits them to use minimal or maximum force oh. in ensuring that person they are looking for is arrested. If it means climbing through the roof, coming down through the roof, busting the door, whatever means they want to apply to get you out of that house, they will do it. There's a provision for that. Yes. And having kept them for eight hours, it did not show any sign of responsibility of a senator. You have people to call. You can call your senior president. As a lawyer, I have clients. Police will go and arrest them. It's okay. I want to talk to my lawyer. They will call me. I'll ask a few questions. Where are you from? Say, I'm from an area command. Or we're from state CID. What is your name? He will give me his name. Which department are you? Which section? He will call the section. I'll say, give the phone back to my client. I'll say, follow them. We will come and meet you there. That is, that is what you need to do. You cannot resist arrest. There are, only, there are two persons who enjoy immunity. First, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria enjoys dual immunity, international immunity and constitutional immunity. It cannot be arrested anywhere in the world. Irrespective of whatever crime he must have. Let, let his car bust into a new, even in the marketplace. He cannot arrest him. That is international immunity. Mm -hmm. Then, constitutional immunity. He cannot be arrested and tried. Same applied to the vice president. Then you have the governors. The governors only enjoy constitutional immunity. Based on their tenure of office. That's all. Same applied to the, the, uh, the president and the vice president. Based on their tenure of office. Then, you have the third class of persons who also enjoy immunity. The ambassadors. The ambassadors. In commonwealth countries, they are, they are referred to as high commissioners. In non-commonwealth countries, they are referred to as 
ambassadors. So under the common words, high commissioners. So even when the vehicle of an ambassador or high commissioner kiss anybody, the highest they can do is for that country to send a message declaring that person personal non grantor Personal non grantor meaning that we don't want you in our country anymore. So the country like Nigeria now will now recall him back. But even when his car, his anybody within his house cannot be arrested. That's why when, when, you, are, when you are chasing somebody, you rush into the embassy. You can't go in there. The person is secured. So, um, uh, back to how we started, Okorocha did the not, he erred. He didn't behave well. At the end of the day, well, has he not been charged to court? Yes. Has he not been granted bail? Yes. Then, why, 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 why allow, why allow, why allow yourself to be humiliated in that manner? Why do you have to allow yourself to be humiliated? Another statement on that. Former governor, former uh, president senator, rubbish. you rubbish yourself. It's not right. No, you don't, you don't allow, you don't give, your, you don't give, you, you start to create an impression is you, you are being witch hunted by the, because you want to, I want to go for screening. Has he not gone for the screening now? He has gone for the screening. He has been granted bail, he has signed the bail. I saw him on television yesterday okay. when he appeared before the screening committee. So, my, the long and short of everything is that when you see a law enforcement agent in your house, they are being clothed with authority from the, flowing from the constitution to execute whatever they are doing. You must cooperate with them. As minimum or maximum force shall be applied to get you out of your house. Okay. Well, in a case when you see some camouflaging now and they come, how do you handle that situation? Because some will come pretending to be operatives of EFCC and other uh, military personnel. How do you handle that? Is it that you will now go through the same process that you're trying to explain now, asking them questions? Of course. You open the door for them or you wait for them to at least give you some convincing answers before you can welcome them in? No, see, when, when, you, when you see a security operative okay. in your house, okay. first of all, you may not open your door. Because you never can tell who is who. Mm -hmm. Some person can disguise. We have um, our military uniform, uh, police uniform, all to get at you. Then, what do you do? At that level, I know that Ruchas or Korocha have the number of EFCC boss, mm -hmm. have the number of IG, have the number of um, uh, uh, national, national uh, uh, the man who is in charge of defense yeah. in, this, in the presidency. Yeah. Yeah. All of you have their number. You, you go and you say, okay, hold on, I'll get to you. You go into your house. You call uh, chief of defense staff. There are some persons in my house. They say that from their military operative and uh, they are being sent to pick me up. Okay. The man says, okay, I did that. Say yes, I'm okay. You will call the next brigade commander. They do send anybody to this place. Okay. He say yes. What is the issue? They will explain. It's okay. They will get back to you. We are aware they are coming from so so place. Go with them. Are you not surprised that after eight hours, that nobody responded to Rochas? It shows that he has, he has exhausted all his contacts. He has exhausted all his contacts. And that he means he is aware that he has called the, he has called the presidency. The presidency will call the chairman of EFCC, chairman of EFCC will, in, his, in his own explanation that court has issued a warrant of arrest. If he does not come, they will strike out the case. And they need to get him to stand in the charge on the 30th of last month. So, he will explain to whoever that calls, it's okay, continue with your job. Continue with your so, having exhausted all 
every contact he has made. Who has attained the authenticity of, of, the, of the, arrest. The, the arrest. All he would have done. Open the door. Gentlemen, it's okay. Say so you are from ELCC. Can you allow me to talk to my lawyer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll go, I'll go with my lawyer. That's all. That's simple as that. Mm. Remember when, when Fai Oshie was a uh, governor of uh, Kitty State? Mm. Fai Oshie, ELCC was abusing, harassing him. On the day he stepped down as a governor, he wore his, t his, his t shirt. ESCC, here I come. To answer their call. He, was, he walked into their office in Abuja with a t shirt. EFCC, yeah, yeah. here I come. They took him in, he made his statement. They released him on bail. That's a gentleman's way of behaving. So, you don't, you, you don't wrestle power with somebody who is vested with constitutional authority, authority to do so. It was lucky that we were in yeah, the civil regime. regime. If it was a military regime. So that man handled uh, him that day. Hmm. Some of us know what we suffered during the military regime. You see, we're a, a constable with the right joy in slapping you. After that, what, what will you do? I tell you. He said, don't tell you, it's okay. I'm sorry, it's one of those things. Yeah. So, so you uh, you have to screen the people who have come, and you follow them. You will be well, once you respect the law enforcement authority, they cannot be rude to you. Thank you so much, sir. Senator Rocha Dotocha insisted that his arrest was politically motivated. Is there an iota of truth there? And uh, considering those prejudicial statements, don't you think that at a point in time, the EFCC operatives might finally be called to carry out their duties whenever they are asked again? Because it will be assumed that any politician that is called or they visit, they are being witch hunted. Well, um, uh, let me put it this way. The, I was happy that they were able to pick him that day. If they didn't pick him, it would have sent a very bad signal okay. to the society that some persons can resist arrest. Meaning they are above the law. law. Some persons would have resisted the, would have given a bad signal to the, to the society. So that was, I was happy even when, even when they came down to the roof and the rest. Doesn't matter. So is it not politically motivated? Because that's the element of truth we're trying to look at now. For me, in my own opinion, I would say no. Because if it was politically motivated, that is to say, they want to prevent him from attending the screening. Okay, okay. They want to prevent him from attending the screening. Okay. They did not attend the screening. Mm -hmm. Was it on screen? Yes. The offense for which he is being invited and, uh, and, and uh, prosecuted, okay. was it committed now? No. These are issues you look at. When you look at it from this parameter, mm -hmm. you, you, so even when it is politically motivated, the facts before you does not support the facts that it was politically motivated. Mm -hmm. Does not support it. You are still on XPB TV Africa on issues today. Um, if you look at Nigeria, you see, corruption seems to have eaten deep into the fabrics of our society. And most politicians, after their tenure in office, are usually faced with corruption charges. Uh, as a legal practitioner, what can we actually do to curb corruption in our society? Well, um, uh... It's unfortunate that uh, we have found ourselves in this situation. I, as a lawyer, and a civil rights lawyer, it's unfortunate that uh, we have two laws operating in Nigeria. The law for the rich and the law for the poor. If a rich man embezzled 19 billion, 100 billion, they will grant him bail. He goes back to his house. At the end of the day, EFCC will tell you we are doing play bargain. What is play bargain? You have stolen 90 billion, return 40 billion, 50 billion, okay. and keep the rest. What kind, of, what kind of rubbish is that? That's window dressing. Go to the go to the uh, correctional center in Agbo, Ogwashiku, and Wari, and the rest. You find persons who stole only one, only 
well, with poss possible one million. They have been in detention for more than 10 years. Some have been convicted. And I tell you, if these persons who have been stealing our money, our common wealth, are doing what they are supposed to do, the crime rate in Nigeria will reduce. And the government don't seem to have the, the, the weak power to fight corruption. The government don't seem to have the weak power to fight corruption. But the government itself is corrupt. If, if, the, if, if you have a government, when Buhari came to power, there were a lot of body language. But after a while, these people studied him. So ah, this man does not, he's not looking down. He's looking up. So I didn't know what happened. Look at, for instance, the accountant general. Yes. They have not discovered another 90 billion. Cash Put together. Broker. Put together 100 and something billion. Broker. From one man. And ASU has been on strike for less than 30 billion. Mm. The future of our children. Has been mortgaged. The future of our children is already, is already blinking. All of them in the National Assembly, all of them who are governors and senators and everything, they're not bothered because their children are not in, in studying in Nigeria. Oh. If their children are here studying, they will give it attention. So, take another, another, another example. Buhari said, Any, anybody who has bought form, who have indicated interest to run, Gave them 72 hours to resign. Those who resign, those who showed interest, abandoned their, their, their ambition and stayed back in that office. What is in that office that made you come back? After declaring your intention. Intention to be a governor or to be a president or to be what and this and that. What is in that office that brought you back? If the president is reasoning, he should know that these people coming back is not for the goods of Nigeria. And he should sack all of them. And come to think of it, how can the president leave one person to run one, one ministry for seven years? I have never seen it in this Nigeria. It's more or less unconstitutional. No, no, not really unconstitutional. It is not done. A lot of people fought for, for the president. A lot of people campaigned for him. A lot of people put in their, their life was at stake. How can you keep one person in one ministry seven for seven years? Both appointments are not made. You mean only this all, all of only these few persons? Seven, seven of these few persons work for you, for you to be president? It's unfortunate. It's highly unfortunate that the president cannot look beyond, 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 beyond his face. I feel very sad as a member of APC to see myself in this situation where you leave one person in one ministry. Look, take for instance, the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngige, declared his intention to, to, to be president. Because they said resign, he said, no, I'm not, I'm not running again. I, I'm going back to my office. Is it your office? Is it your office? I mean, there's something. There's that, something yeah. they know the trap they have set for one way or the other to, to generate money. Because nobody is supervising them. Mm. If they are being supervised, they will, they will not. You won't be seeing all this corruption here and there. Mm. Look, who is supervising them? They're having a free hand. So, from the look of it, it's actually the problem of corruption in our society now is a difficult task. That's the implication. Obasanjo has said it, that Nigeria needs a mad, a mad leader. And I support him. We need a mad leader. Somebody who, who will, even if it means offending the law to get the things right, offend the law. As it, as it, as it is now, nobody can say he's happy with, with the situation of Nigeria. Let me tell you, the indices of a failed state are all visible now. 
the indices of a failed state is visible now. The 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 is it the, the Methodist uh, primate? Who, yes, the primate. Who was arrested? Okay, now kidnapped. Kidnapped. Okay, now. The church paid 100 million. 100 million to get him released. You have the police. You have the DSS. You have the military and the military intelligence. They could not in any way circumvent this situation and get these people arrested. And these people collected the ransom, 100 million, before they let them go. Do you know the type of arms these mm. persons are going to acquire yes, with 100 million? The trained victims are still in captivity till today. And no means of identifying No, the, the federal government has not done anything to get them out. All they want to say that the train, they, they want to resume activities. Yeah. In the eastern region, We have to set up government now, whether you like it or not. We have to set up government. The federal government and the IPOP. And they are tossing power. IPOP will give an order. On Monday, nobody should move away. And it will, it will be obeyed. Any day, Carol is going to court. Nobody should step out. And it will be obeyed. What, what do you call that? These are the indices. Of a failed state. Yes. And it's getting visible. Getting visible. That brings us to another question, Barista. Uh, the cost of purchasing presidential funds for the primaries in a, um, PDP, APC, and other parties, it has become alarming. I think we heard it was around 100 million for the presidential fund. Do you think it is healthy for the Nigerian citizenry as they're looking forward to the next political dispensation? Because there are speculations that if such people could pay such an amount to get the presidential form, if they finally occupy that seat, won't they pay back the money to wherever the money came from before they start to work in? In the first, the first place, the salary of a president for four years is not up, is not up to 60 million. Not up to 60 million in a year. I think in a year, it's not up to 60 million. If the job you are seeking to do, the salary is not up to 60 million, how can you buy a phone for 100 million? Is that party not encouraging corruption? If the form is about 20 million, 30 million, it's okay, fine. That if you are buy this form, okay, yes, in four years, put together in four years. But it's not about 60, not up to 60 million. The job you are applying to do, you are your you are remun, uh, remuneration. remuneration. Everything attached to that office legally is not up to 60 million, about 56 million. Then you are selling the form for 100 million. That is just form. You have not gone into campaign. Then the campaign, at the end of the day, no presidential candidate, particularly the two ruling parties, will spend less than, not, not, will spend less than 40 billion. Before the general election. No, during during the campaign. No. I mean, at the end of the day, what are we looking at? What are we, what are we encouraging? And you say you the youth are leaders of tomorrow. And you you have you have cleverly put in machinery in place to exclude the youth. How can a youth have hundred million to buy from? You see, when, when they make references to First Republic, that uh, Gowan was uh, 
31 when he was head of state, and now Oro was 27 when he moved the motion for the Nigeria self-rule in 1957. Um, uh, this one was this age and that age. These were, the, these were the founders and beginners of Nigeria. Who among them was older than them? Who among them was brighter than them? Nobody. The people who are older and bright, older, are not educated. So that's why you can have people of that age, at that time, starting Nigeria. It's not that they, act, they agree to give it to them. Go on, go on, Ojuku, uh, Yaradua, Al, 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 no, Yaradua, in the military. These are the first set of first set of military officers in Nigeria. Azikiwe were the, they were the first set of journal, uh, journalists who traveled abroad, who was in England, was in, uh, in the US, studied journalism, and came back. Awolowo, Red Law, Kotoba, that's all. They were youths. They were youths. They were, the, they, were the, they were the beginners of the earliest in Nigeria. It's not that they willingly gave it to them as a youth. But they made themselves outstanding. Period. If I would if I would didn't go to school, wouldn't have been whatever he was as at that time. If he didn't travel uh, to uh, to US to study journalism, to come back and use his grammar to confuse. Confuse so many persons who were not educated as at that time. No, it, will not, it will not happen. If Gowan was not in the military, he won't be there. Montilla, Mohammed, and so on and so forth. So, the youth of Nigeria, the. the I don't buy the presidential form, it's not possible for them. Why would you get 100 million? What business are you going to do? If, after buying the farm, is that the end? No. You still have, I've told you now, the minimum of 20 billion. For campaigning. For campaigning. You're going to, you're going to visit the 36 states plus F FCT. And in most cases, you may visit three states in a day. So they must be standby presidential jets. You finish on Delta, you fly to, uh, you start Delta, for instance, 12 o'clock. Edo, uh, 3 o'clock. Maybe Lagos, 5 o'clock. You run it through. Are you going to, are you going to do, you going to do it by road? No. So, that presidential jet is going to take you in all this. Maybe two presidential jets, because the crew that will follow you. Maybe the play will not be one play will not be enough. Yeah. Where will you get the money to do all this? Where will you get the money to do all this? So, my my only take in all this, my only take in all this, is for the for the youth, the way they governance that governize themselves in the answers protest. Oh, yeah. Come together again and, and vote all these people out. How can I think who is or who is 70 something years be talking about to be president of Nigeria? And it's the same circle of people. The same circle of people. Re the re power. Recycling yeah. themselves. Look at, look at the new trend now. They are all bringing their children on board. They are not bringing their children on board. House of Assembly, Governor, this, that. So, it, so it is now class consciousness. Class consciousness. So if you don't have money, there's no there's no room for the poor to come in. To come in. And the citizens are watching. It cannot happen. I was happy when, when some of my friends in Europe and Europe and America called me that they are they are coming together to, to get P2B to be the president of Nigeria. And I support that. I Obi has Obi have a good idea. A good idea. On how to save costs for the nation. He has spoken it when he was governor. So uh, well, that brings us to our ex governor, Peter B. He was said to have defected to the Labour Party. Do you think such party now will give him the ticket 
and will he succeed as the president, knowing that he's from the East? I don't know if you look at that. But presently, there is this silent uh, 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 battle going on that Easterners cannot and will not be president. Do you think it is possible for him? Well, in the I can't remember the the, the confab now that uh, existed. I can't remember now where the president, where the Nigerians came together and um, uh, let me say demarcate the, the, the country into six zones. Three in the south, three in the north. And um, from the first republic, you know, the, from uh, uh, 1999, it has been rotating north and south. After the death of uh, Abiola, who was a symbol of June 12th, Okay, the only way we can compensate, compensate the Yorubas for the loss of MKO Abiola, Abiola is to zone the presidency to the West. PDP zone it to the West. Then at the a APP uh, presidential primaries, Obunaya Ono won the ticket. But for that singular fact, that they, 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 they've all agreed that the Yorubas should be compensated, mm -hmm. we have to step down for Lufa Layo. So, Head or tail, it is Yoruba. Based on the comfort. No, based on the election. Okay. AMPP, Olufala is a, is, a, is a presidential candidate of APP. Then, Obasanjo is a presidential candidate of uh, PDP. So, then, this, these are the two formidable parties. Head or tail. If uh, Olufale wins, it is Yoruba. Obasanjo wins, it is Yoruba. That was the agreement. And after that, it was agreed again, go to the uh, no. north. All presidential candidates came from the north. Here are one. won. Having won, after two years plus, he died in office. It is a constitutional provision that when an elected person dies, his vice or deputy should take over. So all those drama they were doing in the National Assembly, doctrine of necessity, it's not backed by the Constitution. What does the Constitution say? When the president dies, in office, the vice takes over. Period. Jonathan was sworn in. After that, it's okay. He wants to do his uh, from a, a contested and he won. At the end of the day, 2015. He lost. Having lost, mm -hmm. I mean, Buhari now is now ending his second term. Today is first of uh, June. June. We're already in the last year. First of June. So, going back from 1960 to date. The first question you ask yourself, the managers of Nigeria, 
Are they being fed to the east? No. The answer is no. No. They are not being fed to the east. Only Jonathan appointed Ikea Joraka, General Hill Joraka, from the east as chief of army staff. For the first time, even throughout the period, it was difficult for him. Yes, they fought a war. Gowan said, no victor, no vanity. Are we keeping to that? The answer is also no. no. If Atiku, who is now saying, telling the East, I will do only one time. I will do only one time. He now understood that they are not fair to the Eastern Bloc. That is why he said he will do only one time. Since you know it is not right, why did you contest at all? Why did, why did you contest at all? All you would have done is, okay, fine, let us leave, leave the Eastern uh, region. Take it. But no. Those who believe that Nigeria belongs to them. That's why I, 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 I give kudos to Wiki for his doggedness. I give kudos to him. He is able to let us know that the country belongs to all of us. You have to apply some the level, level of look at the look at look at the despite look at despite despite the 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 gango. He got two hundred and uh, I think thirty seven votes. Two thirty seven votes. Despite the gang up. So if there was no gang up, if that we would have cleared the voting. And who did it against him? Our people. Who wants to be vice president to Atiku? But now the politics is becoming more scientific. Becoming more scientific. Not the one you say in your house, you say, we'll remove this and put this. No. Some persons have that come together. That this is the type of people, type of persons who want as a VP to the to, to article. I was telling some of some people in my office a few days ago what happened during the SDP and NRC. During that period, NRC have 14, 14 uh, governors. SDP had 12. At the end of the day, Atiku was a, a presidential candidate being fronted by Musa, late General Musa Yaradua. Abiola was a presidential candidate. King Gigibe was a presidential candidate. They did the first election, no clear winner. Did they run off? Abela won. Now had an alliance with a uh, SDP governor, now had an alliance with uh, Abiola, and they delivered their vote to Abiola. Abela won. Before winning, Abela had an uh, agreement with Musa Yadadua that he's going to pick Atiku as a running mm -hmm. mate. Have you won? 10 out of the 12 SDP governors met Abiola. The person we want to be your running mate is King Gibi. If you pick Atiku, you're on your own. Atiku now, uh, Abiola now picked King Gibi. That was the quarrel between Abiola and Musa Yaradua. The trouble started. Because Musa Yaradua controlled the military, IDB annoyed 
the election. election. Up when they have declared 18 states, out of the 18, Abdullah has won about 17. So with that 17, I've gotten to third out of the 26 states we have. In Zeribe, hurriedly went to the prepared the party application yeah. and got Justice Ipeme, whom they gave 15 million as a debt, to issue an injunction restraining NEC, then, then it was NEC, National Electoral Commission, from going further in the declaration of the of the uh, result. Yeah. ABC, Professor ABC Mosu went to IDB. This is what I've served with. And he said, you know what to do. You know what, what to do. One, it's an injunction. Okay. Then, I think there was, I think it was Decree 20 of the, of the law establishing NEC. It says, no court in Nigeria, no court in Nigeria have the right to inquire into the activities of NEC, Natural Electoral Commission. So, they, they will call it Asta Clause. Asta Clause. So since there's an Astar clause, as the man was to declare to go on with the result, it was, it was adopted hmm. and kept in communicado. There was, there was confusion in Nigeria. Chaos. That led to the adornment of June 12th. That forced IDB. He too, he was forced out of office. Okay. Same thing is about to play out again. Atiku have promised some one or two persons you'll be the vice president. And that was what the, some persons that were working on that on, on in the in, uh, behind the scene. Behind the scene. Carrying money to give to him. Now it is proving that we case. Uh, support is not just within River State. It's spread across. And most persons in the West queued behind Wiki. Some persons in the North have also queued behind Wiki. So if it is, if this is the position, Article is already in the crossroad. You pick somebody Outside Wiki, there's trouble. You pick the people you have promised, Wiki and others will pull away. When they pull away, that's a big blow to uh, PDP. Knowing the fact that one, P2B, with his large followers, has left PDP. Abaribe, the minority leader, leader, Senator Abaribe, minority leader in the National Assembly, has also left PDP in the East. Equerimado okay. in Enugu has also left PDP. Okay. So who is left in the East for PDP? Wow. Who is left? So it's I, a dicey situation. I, I wish them luck. Well, viewers, we are still in the studio from XVD TV Africa on our program Issues Today. We have been looking at Senator Korocha's arrest, politics, and the 2023 elections in view. And with me in the studio has always been, and is still with us, Barista Ifae Awolo, the National Chairman of Human Rights Restoration Movement. Um, Barista, before we go, there are two questions I want to ask. Um, first of all, there are speculations that delegates were influenced with money during the primaries, and Nigerians have expressed doubts in the forthcoming elections, and they are saying they are not coming out 
to vote since it is clear that money is going to play on that day. How do you change the mindset of Nigerians in this regard? Well, um, uh, put it this way. The National Assembly shot themselves on the foot. They shot themselves on the foot. You see, when you take a carpenter to go and do mechanic mechanic job, that is the result. Even when they are not lawyers, most of them there are, are not lawyers. Even some of them who are lawyers did not practice practice the law. Did not practice the law. And since you did not practice the law, what do you do? You get a seasoned lawyer to draft this law for you people. Okay. Few days to election, delegate election, they now discovered that themselves cannot even vote. That they made law against themselves. What a shame. All the law you have been passing, you just do first reading part, second reading part, third reading part. Hey, carry. You cannot sit down to read the law. To know that even in the election you are going for, you cannot even vote for yourself. You cannot even vote for yourself. Can you explain that part, this idea of not voting for yourself? The law they made, the National Assembly made, says that only delegates can vote. And the delegates should be, should be nominated from the, from the world. Okay. And different, at, at different stage of election, different stage of, different types of uh, delegates. At the state level, three, three per, per ward. Okay. At, the, at the presidential level, one, one from each ward. Each state, you know, each local government. Then it will be seven seven four. So one one. We have seven hundred seven hundred and seventy four local government. So one one each. So one, it makes it very easy for you to hijack the delegates. That is why they can they can afford to pay as much as twenty thirty thousand dollars. All you need to do, you have 774 local delegates. You capture 500. That's all. Capture 500. I use the word capture. Because okay. they will capture them, seize their phone, keep them in a hotel, be feeding them. You move them from there, from their, from their wherever you have kept them in captive. So the venue to go and vote. So whose duty is it to capture them? Is it is the is the, 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 the article and the article have paid more? So you have more money. He captured most of them via the governors who are supporting them. So I, I don't know the day these persons will come and vote. In but, favor. In favor of him. But still, most persons who were captured said we will take the money. We know where we are going to vote. That's why the vote, that's why the, the thing was like that. Last minute, it became very dicey. It became very, very dicey. That's why Tambuwa had to come and make that speech. It was that speech. I urging them to vote for Atiku that saved the situation. Okay. Saved the situation. So, one... The process of electing whoever. That was why the first law they made. Let it be an in, let it be a direct primaries where everybody will be involved. Go and queue. Okay. Like the like option A4. Go there and queue. You want to vote for Asala. Stay this line. They will count it. Openly. They will record. You want to vote for Stalin? 
stand behind him. But it's not so. At the end of the day, a delegate is making about 60 million. It's 50 million. So he has gotten his dividend of democracy. <laughs> Even when you appoint him SA or SSA, and in 350,000 a month in a year, 4 million. In four years, 16 million. If the governor wins again, I'll reappoint again. 16 plus 16. 32. So what he has gotten as a delegate has covered all these things. He doesn't care about your essay or whatever. He doesn't care. But that is not what we want. For, for us to elect people who will govern us for that period of time, we should be given to men with integrity. It should be given to men who have conscience, who will know that these persons cannot lead us well. This is person who can, who can lead us. It's unfortunate that the people we have at the National Assembly who are charged with the responsibility of uh, making laws for good governance of Nigeria fed us. So these speculations of Nigeria now, saying they are not coming to vote because it's more of selection than election, how do we change the mindset? No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, that is the... Well, it's all, let's say still again, unfortunate that uh, the, nas the National Orientation, Orientation Agency mm -hmm. is not doing their work. People don't seem to understand that they would have, would not have, would have what they call beavers. So the idea of people um, um, stuffing the ballot box is no longer so. Now, your vote will count. Now, your vote will count. Your vote must count. As you vote, it transmits to the central data of INET. So before you before, at the end of the day, you have known who has won the election. Mm -hmm. And still the electoral law has further empowered INEC. If by paraventure Mr. A is declared winner, and within that period of time, the element of fraud, manipulation, is established. INEC have the power to uh, cancel that declaration. Before it wasn't so. The moment INEC pronounces you as the winner, the only option you have is to go to court. But it's no longer so now. So, because of this, I and few others, some of our friends in Europe, who have tried to set up what is known as enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough is, a, is a, an organization founded under the principle of justice, equity with good conscience, with final objective to fight for the less privileged persons in Nigeria. Our duty now is to reach out to persons. Go and register. Have your PVC. Your PVC is your AK-47. Your PVC is your AK-47. With your PVC, you can see this man who don't want him. And you go there and remove him. That's the only way you can remove him. Some persons have institutionalized themselves. They see themselves as a teen god in political arena. The only way we can remove them is by concentrating the people. Yeah. Get them to know that it, it, what happened last four years will not, it's not the same mm -hmm. as now. Yeah. Now, your vote will count. Mm -hmm. By this, we are urging the federal government to inject money into national orientation agency. 
so that they will go to village to village. The nooks and crannies of the society. Village to village. Get the town criers. Call meetings. Tell them that their vote will count. You as your head. And then finally, you mm. see, they will tell us the the not that they are they don't, they are they are fools. Okay. But when it comes to politics, all these people you see pushing with Bairo, asking to bring out this APVC, he mm. has it. Mm. When the time comes to voting, mm. they all join Dan Gote trailer, they're back to their to vote. The Igbos are the fourth largest ethnic group in Nigeria. Fourth largest ethnic group in Nigeria. Do they demonstrate that in their voting? The answer is for them. You as your very enough is enough. No. Yes. Now your vote will count. So go out and get your PVC. It's the duty of the National Orientation Agency to sensitize the people. You've heard it all from Barista Ifani Aolo. You have been watching XPB TV Africa.